capture that. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but I think capturing automation is a brand new feature specific for this. What's up my fellow household appliances, it's your boy Eldre, and today we have the brand new Ableton Move, and I'm gonna give you my first impressions because everybody's been commenting since it was released, yo Eldre, what are your thoughts on Move? And first and foremost, big announcement, let's get it out of the way right now, your boy collaborated with Ableton to make three exclusive drum kits that are gonna come with every move device right away you can start cooking up with some eldre lo-fi sauce with that being said let's get into my full honest first impressions um i've only really had this for a day but i have played around with it in the past but the main three things i love about it is the form factor uh i mean come on dude like it's standalone but it's a super slim super thin the build quality is top notch just like the ableton push 3 except the ableton push 3 is a $2,000 beast, all right? This thing is standalone, but to me, when I think standalone personally, I think of portability. I'd hate to admit it, but I have not taken the Push 3 anywhere. It pretty much stays on my desk, which in return means I almost never use it standalone. Now, this on the other hand, hella portable. It has a built-in mic, it has built-in speakers, Definitely not the loudest, but they're there if you need them in a pinch. So the second thing I love outside of the form factor is just the fact that this is a portable thing that is Ableton. No matter what other hardware I use, whether it be OP1, SP4, 4, MPC Live, um, I'm always just making a loop and then I'm stemming it out and bringing it into Ableton and finishing it. That's pretty much how it goes because I just love Ableton, bro. I have not ever in my life finished one beat completely on a standalone hardware device. I'm talking from creation to mixing to bouncing. Don't do that on anything else. So with this, I can come up with my little ideas on the fly. And then when I'm ready, I just hop over in Ableton. It actually works through the cloud. I can just download the projects and boom, it's right into Ableton as I would see it, you know, with the MIDI and everything. Whereas with an OP1 or the MPC, it's all audio. I can't adjust anything. I can't change anything. But with this, I have every single thing that I made in that project and it's in Ableton now, you know? Before I get into my third favorite and some of the drawbacks, let's just try to cook up a beat real quick. This will be really my first time recording a full beat and let's see what happens. First thing I wanna show you is my kits, right? So this is Eldre Cafe kit. I'm plugging straight into the speakers right now, so. Cozy kit. Mellow kit. I don't wanna go over all the details of the hardware and all the little facts that you can find on their website and other people's videos. We're just gonna just give you my first impressions, assuming that you already know a little bit about it. Um, if you'd like a more in-depth review of this thing, let me know in the comments, we can make that happen. But yeah, so this is one of my kits, so obviously I know how it sounds, but let's just cook something up. Let's start with like just recording something. capture that this is one of my favorite features already if you notice once you hit capture it'll get whatever BPM you did and just take your recording live I don't think I recorded it how I liked it so I'm just gonna delete that whole clip start from scratch So it started a little late, but as you can see, this is a step sequencer. So this is that note that I played first. If I wanted to just nudge that over, I can just hold it and just try to nudge it to like where I think it should be. And obviously I could quantize it right here. My quantization is at 40%. Let's 
do some kind of base. Um, so one, I don't know if it's a con or some kind of weird thing that I'm not a huge fan of is when you're in the key and scale mode that we're all so familiar with on the push, um, it's just a different layout. So I'm used to making chords like this. And you just won't get the same sounds because it's laid out. Each scale is on the pad. So do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. So it's a little more difficult to do chords on here. Because if you wanted to go higher, no, that's just another octave. So then you got to like do the math and you got to start from here or. Or. So that would be nice if I, so I would have to go, I don't know, you get me though. It's just a little different and it's gonna take some getting used to. So I probably will end up just using like chromatic mode until I get my bearings on that. And then check this out, you can also capture automation. Capture that. Boom, so then we have the, obviously we have the arrangement view. I mean, I guess this is session mode, right? Um, Copy, copy, copy. Click, click, click. As you can see, it's super easy to make beats on it. Obviously I have my own samples built in, but you can use the Move software to add all your own sounds. Um, you can also sample, like I said, there's a built-in mic, but you can also like sample from your phone and sample from anything. It has a MIDI input, so I can use a MIDI controller for the chords and whatnot if I am bothered by the way the pads are, whatever it may be. So yeah, to finish up my top three, the first one was just the sheer portability of it. It's super thin, lightweight. Uh, four hours of battery life, built-in speaker, all of that jazz. And my second one was just the Ableton integration because I love Ableton already, I love Push already. And this is just like a little marriage of all those things in one little portable device. And my third favorite thing about it in comparison to other smaller hardware devices that I've used is the simplicity of the workflow. In my opinion, two things that are super, super, super clutch and unique about this device is the capture button first and foremost. I showed you that feature earlier where literally I just played whatever I wanted, hit the capture button, it already synced to the tempo. Um, I didn't play it that well, so I did it over, but that is sick. I was at the Ableton event and just watching how they were cooking up on it, they really utilize the capture button. They just play stuff, hit capture, and they just carry on. They're hardly ever hitting record. And it goes with automation too. I don't even know if that's a feature in Ableton where you can capture automation. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but I think capturing automation is a brand new feature specific for this. And yeah, just in comparison, like the main thing I can only compare this to for myself is like the OP1 or like the KO2. Um, those are two things that are super cool, super cute. 
a lot of fun sounds, but just not the most intuitive. I think what this brings is like, those have their own vibes, you know what I'm saying? Those are kind of more like, I don't know, they're more analog feeling as where opposed this brings back those kind of like limitations of having minimal stuff to work with, but it still has like more futuristic modernized features. Like, I mean, come on, an undo button, you know what I'm saying? Um, the step sequencer is cool. So out of all my hardware devices, I honestly think this might be the one I use the most. And I haven't used it with Ableton yet. I wanna see how that works because low key now I'm thinking, what's the point of even having the push three on my desk at all times? Maybe I'll just have this. Cause you know, your boy likes to have a clean desk. So having this tiny thing on here instead of the Ableton push uh, might be the move. We'll see, I'll let you know in a future video. Let's get on to some of the drawbacks, you know what I'm saying? Cause it's, you know, obviously it's not all flowers. Um, first things first, there's only four tracks. Me personally, I'm not really tripping about it. You know, like the OP1 only had four tracks, for example. So, you know, limitations. Limitations lead to creativity. What are you gonna do? Another drawback that I haven't quite figured out yet, there may be some kind of workaround, but there aren't any audio tracks, which I guess, I mean, I guess for like a portable hardware, like they don't usually have audio tracks but it would be nice to be able to just plug in my synth and just record sound straight from my synth while the beat is playing. I don't know how I'm gonna do that yet because you can sample stuff, but can you sample stuff while recording stuff? I don't know how that works. We shall see. And as far as the sampling, it would be super sick if this had like, you know, a simpler built in where you can just like record a full vinyl or what have you and just, you know, twist a knob to mess with the slices and just slice to 16 pads. That is not a thing. In order to chop samples on this, you have to record the audio in like old school style and like tap each pad, which works, you know what I'm saying? It works. But yeah, I really got to use it more. So just stay tuned, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Uh, I'm gonna try to just mostly use this for like my next beats. If you didn't know, I'm doing Beattober right now. So I'm literally making one beat every day. So I'll probably just like use this. I'll probably use this to make beats for like a week straight and then do like a full in-depth review and find out all the things I dislike about it and all the things I love about it. But so far, like I'm inspired and I think it's super fun and my sounds are in it, baby. You know what I'm saying? So go grab it. Go grab it, get the get the Eldre sauce. Fact check this as well, but I think if you have Ableton 12.1, my sounds might be in that. But either way, Eldre Jump Kit Volume 6 is coming soon. It's on the way. I already dropped a free preview pack. I'll leave the link to that in the description. It's coming extremely soon, extremely soon. And it's also very fire. So yeah, comment down below if you're gonna pick up one of these or if you picked one up already, let me know your thoughts. Let me know what you love. Let me know what you hate. Um, I forgot to mention the price. It is $450. Honestly, I think that's pretty reasonable. I think if it was anything more, it'd be some trouble. But considering all that this does in comparison to, let's say, the KO2, which is like $400, for example, this is only $50 more. And, you know, capture button, undo button, Ableton integration, Eldre sounds built in. <laughs> like, come on, bro. But yeah, let me know your thoughts. Check out this video I did with the Ableton Push 3 a while back if you're interested in that. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.